Hi and welcome to Serenity Cove Crafts. My name is Linda and today we are going to be making an adorable little Halloween pumpkin teddy bear. But before I show you how to make that, I just wanted to show you what I've been doing for my Etsy store. The past few days, look what I've been making. Ah, aren't they cute? The cutest little, do um, they're Halloween ghost puppies. Okay. Now, whenever I do a pattern on my Etsy store, I do a full tutorial, plus I also give written instructions along with photos. And it takes about three days uh, to develop a pattern and to to do all the step for, steps for it. So if I remember, I'll put the link down, um, the link to my Etsy store um, down in the comments or down, sorry, not the comments, but down below. Just hit more. And without further ado, we're going to start on our Halloween teddy bear. Now the colors that I used for this, for the pumpkin, I used, now the thing to remember is, you know your knitting machine best. So go ahead and use whatever yarn your knitting machine uh, works best with. So just any orange, for the pumpkin and this in this particular case it is loops and threads and this is the only loops and threads that works in my my machines okay so this um this one is called cadmium orange and for the body for the body i use i got this big ball for ten dollars so i just uh i went with it it is called, ooh, what's it called? Topaz, okay? And then that will be for the teddy bear parts. And you will need a little bit of black to embroider. If you're choosing to embroider the eyes, I will be using safety eyes and a safety nose, but I will embroider the smile part on the mouth, okay? So, Let's get started. Now, if you're new to knitting machines, I do have several tutorials that teach you how to cinch your tubes, how to double your work, um, how to change colors, how to, I'm just trying to think here, oh, how to make a drawstring. Uh, we will be doing all of those steps except for the color change, okay? So for the head, I actually use my Addy 46 pin machine. You can go ahead and use your 48 pin Centro or any other large knitting machine you have. And then we'll also be using the 22 pin. I use the Addy. Um, I've used the Centro as well in the past. Okay, so with this medium brown for the head, I knit 60 rows on my 46 pin. Okay, so I cinch and I'm tying off. So I've cinched the one end. I'm going to cinch this one here with you. I'll do this one time only because you you must be pros at this by now. Just cinching and closing. All right. Okay, so basically what I do, just to reinforce the stitches here at the top, the open edge, I'm just grabbing these stitches with my threaded yarn needle right and we're just we're just going to gather them up and you're going to make your way all around till you get back to where you started yes i'm living and breathing halloween right now it's my my favorite time of the year and uh so i'm just i i'm i have so 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 many creative ideas it's just i can't make them fast enough and I had neglected my Etsy store for oh so so many months so I had to put my keister in gear and design things for that so I got two patterns designed another one's a, a skeleton if you wanted to check that out my Etsy store name is Serenity Cove Crafts but all one word when you're naming the store, they don't let you put spaces in it. 
So it's all one word. And if you're not excited about Halloween and you're not a Halloween lover, just be patient. The Christmas designs are all in my head as well. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just trying to get trying to get the Halloween out first and then we'll be working on Christmas. Okay, so I'm back where I started, so I pulled it tight. And I'm just going to close this end, tie it off. All right, tie it a couple of times. So now we're going to double our work. Insert one end of the work into the other end. And when you take your piece off the machine, always give it a good stretch. We're stretching it out. Okay, so I'm doubling my work here. And let's see, I'm going to make a drawstring. I'm actually going to use one of these tail ends. They're long enough. All right. So to secure them, just on the outer side, you go through the middle where that hole would be, and you're coming through the same spot on the inside, just like so. Okay, so we're going to tie these off. Normally you would hide your, when you tie something off, you would hide the ends inside the work between the layers. But because this will be getting stuffed, I'm just going to leave the tail ends. I'm going to pick the longest one. and I'm actually going to cut that one down to make the drawstring. Okay, so we're just going to flip this right side out. Go ahead, take a long piece of the same color yarn. But to make the drawstring, I'm just grabbing the open edge here. I'm grabbing two stitches, skipping over one. Grabbing two, skipping over one, two, one, two, all the way around. So pull this, don't pull it too tight. You don't want this coming off. Leave a bit of a tail hanging. And I will show you how to do this because you will be doing this for the pumpkin as well. Now I haven't made this up yet. I have all the pieces knit. So I don't have a picture or uh, a prototype to show you. I'm doing it as I'm going along here. Because I, once I get this done, I have to go back to designing more for my Etsy store. So I'm just, uh, you know, trying to do it as quickly as I can. Quickly and efficiently. If you don't understand a thing I'm saying, then it's not very efficient, is it? Now, right now, it's actually September 1st, first day of September. Goodbye, August. Welcome to September. Unless you're one of my friends from the future. You know who you are. You know you Australians. You're already in tomorrow. You're my friends from the future. You're already in September 2nd. I used to be a greeting card designer, so I got to know a lot of people in that community. Um, you know, that live down under. Okay, so I'm back over where I started. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull this through. Okay, so we're going to grab some stuffing. Grab some stuffing. We're going to stuff the head generously. Oh, actually, I had this knotted mess from another project. Um, because this is a thick yarn and it's doubled, you won't be able to see the dark colors underneath. So I use my yarn tails and, um, you know, big balls of yarn, yarn barf that you can't untangle. Those go into my stuffing projects as well. I'm sorry, I don't know what to call it. To me, it's yarn barf, and I don't know what the technical word would be. Now, the reason I like to add the drawstring 
at this point before before I actually stuff it is so that I can gauge see I can easily pull it and see if I have to add more right. thinking give him a little more now what I'm doing now before I close it off just going to pull out. I've got some safety eyes and noses. And honestly, I couldn't even tell you what size these are. Um, I went down a Timu rabbit hole when it came to shopping. And I bought all kinds of safety eyes and nose. And a whole bunch on Amazon as well. So I'm not sure what size I have. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a snout on. And I just need to pick a size of safety eye. I'm thinking, what do we think? I think these might work nicely for this particular size. Uh, if you need a measurement, uh, there may be, let's see, they're over half an inch maybe three quarters of an inch wide, a little less. And for the nose, I am actually going to put a nose on him. And this nose is, whoops, it's over here. It's about an inch wide. But I do have some tutorials that show you how to embroider. So I won't be taking time to embroider the eyes and the nose on this tutorial. We'll just, uh, I'll let you go and dig up one of the old tutorials for that. But I will show you how to do the mouth because I am doing the mouth for this project. All right. Now, the reason I pulled these out at this point, so I can determine where I want the safety eyes to go. Okay. I'll take a little of this out. So I haven't tied it yet. So right now I'm only single tying it. So it's not in a knot. Just so I can you know, kind of gauge where I want these eyes to go. And then once I've decided where they go, I'll be able to tell you where to put them on your teddy bear. Okay. So if we're going to have a muzzle over it around here. So I'm trying to do this all with just one hand muzzle around here. Let's see. Put the eyes. Okay. So one here. The other I want to kind of keep along the same row. Okay. So that gives me a starting point. I'm just going to secure these and then I'll get measurements for you. And this is why I don't tie it off. We'll leave, we'll leave some of this <laughs> yarn barf in here. Okay, here we go. Now when you use safety eyes, see the backs of safety eyes and nose, they have these little posts. Okay. And the plastic piece will go over top. And I have a little tool that I use and it just pushes it on for me. Okay. And if you don't have one, just I just pushed it on like that. Really I just undid the back here. I wanted to adjust the eyes a bit. All right. Okay, so I placed these from the top center. Let's see. Going down. Okay. So about three inches. 
the center of the eye, about three inches from the top. And I place these, the space from end to end here is about two inches. Okay. So let's go ahead and throw our stuffing back in. Now you, you probably get to skip the step that I just did because I gave you the measurements. So you could put your safety eyes on and then stuff it. Right? The magic is in the smooshing. Here's, I'm get this tied off. Okay, don't worry about the hole. We can sew that in. You can even skip sewing it in if you want because this will be going on top. Now the torso is going to be the pumpkin. So this, the head will be going on top of the pumpkin. So you don't even have to sew that. I'll just leave that part open to show you. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hide these tail ends. So for the nose, I used a, a darker brown. It's not the darkest brown you can get, but it is a little darker. Okay. So what I did, this was on a 22 pin machine. Sorry, I just got my, my scribbles here. Okay, so for the snout, it's like a medium to dark brown. And I did 16 rows on the 22 pin machine. Okay, so we're going to cinch and tie both ends, double the work, All right, now I will be inserting a safety nose in here. All right, so I'm gonna put it right here in the middle. Actually, I have to be careful. There's a very sharp plastic edge on this. Trying, there we go. Right. I'm going to There we go. I'm just push it in this way. See, getting old, getting older. Don't have the strength I once had. There we go. Okay, so now I am tying it off. I chose not to tie this as soon as I doubled it because I wanted to leave a tiny bit of the hole in the center to get the nose through. Right. So at this point, I'm just going to keep the longer of the two tail ends. This is the shorter one. Okay. I am going to hide the end. I'm going to take this end and I'm just guiding it here. I'm just going to guide it to the edge of the circle. Right. 
So now we are going to sew this on to the face. Whoops, we need stuffing. We need a little bit of stuffing. I almost got ahead of myself. Okay, so what I'll do is just put a tiny bit and when I work my way around here, when I get within about an inch from where I started, I'm going to then reassess and add some more stuffing. So I'm leaving a little bit of a hole for stuffing. And I'm using one of these yarn needles just as a stitch marker. I'm going to do it this way. All right, so we're just going to mattress stitch this in place. Okay, let's just grab a couple of stitches from the head and a couple from the snout. All right, a couple from the head couple from the snout. We're just going to work our way around here. So I'm mattress stitching and I like to pull a little as I'm going along to help smooth the edges rather than having two tail ends and pulling the mattress stitch closed at the end I only have the one tail end so kind of pulling at it as I go right try to keep it even because you want the snout to be pretty close to the eyeball. All right, I'm going to move this over here. And you just want to keep checking. Just make sure you're going where you want to. Right. So I'm going to continue this off camera. I will be back when I am down around here. So I'm back. And I've got a little gap here. So now I'm going to take some of this stuffing. Right. What do you think? See if that's enough. I still have a little bit to go where I can decide to add more if I want. Let's see. Um, I actually think that's full enough, so I'll stick with what I have. All right, let's go ahead and tie this off. So how's yours looking? I'm just going to tie it again. Let's go ahead and hide the tail end. All right. 
So now we're going to do the mouth. Just grab some yarn. Don't need too much. Let's grab some black. There we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to you know, put the little mouth here. So I am going to see. Actually, I'm going to try something here. Let me try a little bit of an eyebrow. Okay. So you want to leave the tail end so you can this is where you will be exiting. So, like that. Let's see, one, two, three. No, he looks angry. We don't want an angry looking bear, actually. And we want to go like this. going up. There we go. That's better. And okay. So now I'm taking my needle and I'm heading over to start the mouth. So I'm just going to guide the needle over to the pointiest edge of this nose. So when you're embroidering, you're always planning the next step ahead. Don't want to pull too tight. Don't want all your hard work to get puckered up. There you go. What do you think? Do you want eyebrows or take them out? Oh, I know what I want. I want to shorten the eyebrow a little. And don't be afraid to undo something if you don't like it. All right, so I'm just going to take it maybe about like that. Okay, so now I'm coming back out here. sure if I like that or not. We'll leave it on. Okay. So I'm going to guide my needle to where I want the edge of the, the mouth to go. So I'm going to want it right about here. Just guide the yarn with your fingers. So I'm going to want it to be about here. come through here and I'm going to bring it out the other side and then yes I'm going in here and now I am exiting I'm going to exit the same way I came in and I have to push here we got to get through the stuffing There we go. Oops, hang on. My needle just jumped. Fortunately, I'm using the um, polyfill, fiber fill here. So it's beautiful. It's a dream to work with the stuffing. Okay. Here's 
Let me go. I think I'm going to cut the eyebrows. I may take the eyebrows out. And in which case I can just go this way. Okay, here's the tail end that I went in with. Here. That's all right. I'm just um, threading on this side here. I'm going to go through here and come back out over here. I'm, and if I don't cut this out of the tutorial, it's just to show you that, you know, we're all human. Nothing goes perfect. You are an artist. No two of your projects will ever be the same. You, my friend, you paint, you paint with yarn. That's what your paintbrush is. You are a fiber artist. No two of your pieces will ever be the same. And if that's not the definition of an artist, then I don't know what is. So you are your fiber artist. Go ahead and tie this. Okay, just make sure you don't pull you don't want to undo the work that you've done. Now, going in this exact same hole, and I'll just exit somewhere else without pulling too hard. There we go. And if you went in the same hole, you shouldn't have any evidence that you were there. You shouldn't have any black yarn, but if you do, all you do is just kind of poke, 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 poke. Pull at this and poke. It will straighten itself out. So I think he's mighty handsome. Okay, so for the ears, you're going to be knitting on your 22 pin machine. All right, let me just go to my row counts here. I did 18 rows. What we're going to do is we're going to cinch and tie both ends, but we are not doubling our work. No, ma'am, we're not. Or no, sir, we're not. I'm just going to tie these off, go to the other side. See, we'll be making these cute little ears, but here we are. Okay, what we're going to do now, I'm just going to hide one of the tail ends. Okay, and what I was saying is we're tying both ends and we're going to hide one end inside the work. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold it so that the cinched ends are together, like so. Just going to thread this tail end And I am just going to snake this tail end over to the edge here. Just over to the edge. And I'm going to sew along this open edge. Uh, nothing fancy. I'm just kind of back and forth. A little bit of a whip stitch. We just want to get it sewn closed so that it's easier to handle and it looks better. Oh, 
Right. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. Tie it off again. I'm just going to hide this inside the ear. All right. So I've already sewn this ear on. What we're going to do is we're going to buckle this, fold it inwards like so. Okay. And we will be sewing it to the head. I will give you measurements. Let's see. The center of the head, here the hole, or where there would be a hole. See, we're about two inches from that. So maybe an inch, the edge will be about an inch each side. Okay. And just see here. Actually, so just grab yourself some more of the same brown. All right. Go ahead. Position that. Let's see. Uh, about like so. Okay. And now we're just going to sew it to the head. Grab a couple stitches from the head. And a couple stitches from the ear. And I just sort of cup the ear in my hand while I'm doing it. And as always, stop, take a look at it, see if you have to pull anything apart. If you have to undo this while you're sewing it on, it's easier to do now than once you've completed your project. Oops. Okay. okay, so keep going around. So I will sew until I get to the end and then I will be tying it off and we'll be coming back to work on the pumpkin. I've got the two ears sewn on the head. It's cute. We're just going to put that aside. Now I already have these steps done. I'll give you the counts here. So with this cadmium orange so it's a burnt orange like a brick color uh, on the 46 pin addy I knit 90 rows then I cast off now I cinched and tied both ends I doubled my work I made a drawstring around the open edge okay go ahead and pause as often as you have to I just uh, you know trying to keep the video not well, not too long anyway. 
my my tutorials tend to go over an hour. Okay, so we're gonna stuff this. Go ahead and stuff this. My beautiful, beautiful, soft, favorite stuffing. Take a look. Use some more. Okay, what do you think? Okay, I think that's chunky enough for a torso. All right, maybe a little more. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and don't worry, I'll smush this in a bit. But right now I'm just going to tie this drawstring. Tie, 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 tie. Don't worry about the hole in top in the top. We will be passing our needle through. Right. So we've got the pumpkin here. It's tied off. So we're going to create the segments for the pumpkin. So take one of these tail ends. Right. So I'm just going to Pick a row here, just sort of follow, use it as a guiding line, okay? And then we're going to come through the bottom, and we're just going to push the needle back up through the top. Right. And when you pull it, it makes these segments, okay? I'm just going to tie this over here. Let's see. I just want to secure that first go around. Okay. So we're going to do the same over here. On the opposite side, right over here. It does not have to be precise. Nothing in nature is precise. You get pumpkins with all kinds of bumps and bulges. Go. And pull it. There we go. Okay. So we've got our two main ones here that divide the pumpkin in half. So I'm actually shifting it. I'm just going to shift that over. So let me tie this first. Okay. I'm going to shift this over here just to make it a little bit more symmetrical. I'm going to do now I'm just going to take another piece a long piece of this orange yarn okay. I'm just going to pass it through the bottom just up to the top here just through the hole I'm just going to tie this over here into the other ones. And actually, if you want, we can do is just hide these right now. Just keep one of the tail ends out. Hide these so they don't get in our way. There we go. Okay. 
All right. So now I'm kind of doing reverse instead of going up and to the underside. I'm just on the underside going up. It's the same thing. So I'm going to want each segment, each half, to have three pieces. So we're going to be going, making two more splits. So, let's see here. That's about a third. Okay, come up through the bottom. Right. A little pull, pull, pull. Now we're coming over here. Get that third segment in, push her way through the top, this over here, all right, pull, 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 there we go, see a pumpkin's taking shape. Now we're on to this side. Let's see. I'm going to go around this way. We're doing the two more lines through here. Just. I just try to hold this yarn here in my hand while I'm trying to drill through with the needle. There we go. Now, our last pass through. So we're going to divide this in half. About like so. Okay. Go ahead, release your needle. Grab this tail end that you kept. Okay, there we go. Let's get that last pumpkin shape, this last segment in. Let's go ahead, tie it, tie it, tie it. Hide your ends. I have not thought this through completely, so give me a second for my brain to catch up to where I'm at. Okay, so we're going to take his hat. Oh, yes, that's going to be so handsome. Okay, so grab some of the brown, some of your brown yarn here. Grab a decent length because we are going to sew it onto the body. All right. You see what I mean with the hole here? You don't have to worry about it. It's going to match up here. Okay. All right. So just kind of figure, look at your pumpkin. Oh, this back end is a little wonky. So we're going to give him a, a wonky bum. Backside. Find your most attractive part of your pumpkin. You can put that at the front. What I'm doing is I'm choosing a part that doesn't have such a deep, deep seam in it. Because I'm going to use going to use some black felt to do the little pumpkin eyes and the mouth. Well, that's the plan. All right, that's the plan. Okay, and go ahead. We're going to mattress stitch this on. Just see if I can 
move this. Sorry, I've got it hugged towards my chest. And, right, I'm just going to start here. So, go ahead, grab a couple stitches off the pumpkin. Keep a tail end here. Grab a couple from the head. And a couple from the pumpkin. Couple from the head. I'm trying not to lean my head into the camera. I tied my head. I have a long blonde hair and I have it tied back so that it's not flopping in front of the camera. There we go. You're just going to keep going like so. All the way around. Okay, so you just match your stitching around. I just wanted to get to this bumpy part with you, and then I'll let you do the rest. A rest on your own. So just trying to get through these little bumps that we made, the segments. Just trying to get through them. So I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. Just try to get through it the best that you can. So here, just trying to grab. I'm not going to be get, getting all these stitches here, but I'm going to grab one from either side of that straight yarn piece. Okay. And then when I match a stitch, I tend to I like to pull it as I'm going along. Okay. So I'll go ahead. I'll finish this off camera. And then we'll be back to do the, for the arms and the legs. All right, I'm back to show you how to do the arm. Look at that, isn't that cute? Ooh, he's coming along. He actually looks the way I imagined him looking. Oh, but I'm not done yet. I mean, <laughs> we could take, we could go down some bad, some dark path and alter it all together, but let's, fingers crossed, it's going to come together the way I hope and imagine that he will. Okay, now for the arms. On the 22 pin machine, you're going to make two arms. I'm using this same brown and I knit 55 rows. So then you're going to take a little bit of stuffing. Actually, no, I'm skipping steps. Okay, so you you cast off and then you cinch and tie both ends and you doubled your work. That's where I'm at here. Oh, see, that's what happens when I do some of the work off, off camera. Okay, so take a bit of stuffing. Stuff the end of the hand. Don't want to stuff it too full. Okay, try to keep it consistent with the other one. Maybe a little less. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this tube lengthwise and we're going to match your stitch across here, ending where the stuffing begins. Okay, so when I match a stitch, I mentioned this, if you watch my channel, I use these, these extra yarn needles. Um, to guide my to guide my path so as stitch markers kind of sort of okay go on here and just following the row and this way I can see whenever I veer off course it, it's very easy when you're mattress stitching to forget what row you're working on I do it all the time <laughs> so this is my way to self-regulate 
Okay, so grab a couple of stitches from over here. Let me zoom in a little. A couple of stitches from this side. Right there. All right. Leave a tail end. I just tuck it underneath the piece I'm working on. Okay, and your chosen row over here. And look, see, I already did it. Even when I started, I put it to the wrong row. One over. There we go. Well, that worked out good. <laughs> Showing you on camera. Okay. And a couple from this side. And you're following the row that you've chosen to follow. Okay. Two stitches from each side. All right. You don't want to pull too tight. We will be pulling this mattress stitch together shortly. Just nice and loose. Now for the leg, you're going to be doing basically the same thing but with the leg we're, we're actually putting stuffing a little further up right Let's see I'm going to keep going. And there's the row I'm following. All right. Do we see? I'm going to go a little further. Just want the hands and the arm parts to match. With the other one that I've already sewn. All right, go ahead, release your needles. Grab one end of each of the yarn tails and grab one in each hand. So gently pull, 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 pull. And then you see it closes up. So pretty. All right, so we're going to tie this one end. Just make sure you're using quite a long piece, <clears throat> excuse me, piece of yarn because I'll be using this to sew onto the body as well. Okay, so I'm just sewing over here, just closing it off. Nothing spectacular. Here we go. I'm going to grab this end. Okay. What we're going to do is sew this closed, but I always like to insert my needle over to the end here because I make my way over here and then I pass this yarn tail up here and then I knot them and then I use the long tail to sew onto the pumpkin. It's kind of the way I taught myself to do it and you know what? It works for me. If you have some other way of doing it, you you know what skills you have. Go ahead. Do what you like doing. We all we can all take different paths to achieve the same result. It's all good. Okay. Release that. 
going to pass this through. I'm just sliding this on up here so that it comes out over here at this edge. All right, so let's tie these ends together. And then this shorter end that we used to sew across, we're going to hide that tail. Sorry, I'm just going to zoom out here. Okay, let's go ahead and hide that. All right, now we are going to sew this onto the pumpkin. So what I did is I stitched along the top and then circled around here and then tied it off and hid the ends inside the arm. You want to make sure that this seam is underneath. See that? The seam is underneath. <clears throat> okay, let's try to even these out here. Let's see. Right, so I'll go right about here. Seam facing down. And just stitching across. Having a couple stitches from the pumpkin, couple from the top of the arm. Right. I'm going to flip him upside down and sew across this way. All right, so I'm just going to continue here and when I come back, we'll do the legs. All right, so I've got the arms on. Now the next step will be the legs. So the same brown. Go ahead and knit two of these and 60 rows, and you cast off. You cinch and tie off both ends, double your work. So now what we do is we're going to stuff it, but we're going to stuff halfway. So more of it is getting stuffed than for the hands. Okay, so I have one done here. Let's see. I think that's probably good. Maybe just put a tiny bit more in. Okay. So now I'm not going to walk you through this end. It's the exact same thing that you did for the arms. All right. You're going to mattress stitch. Cross, but you're only going halfway. There we go. Okay, so you're going to mattress stitch up to here, halfway, and then you're going to sew the ends closed. You're going to pull your mattress stitch closed, sew this end, you know, kind of like this. Be sewing it closed like that and then you're going to pass this tail end up through the top 
and I will meet you to sew it onto the bottom of the pumpkin. All right, I've sewn, I've gotten both of my legs done, and I've sewn one to the bottom of the pumpkin. Now the other one, I'm going to, I don't have any tail end that was long enough to sew, so I'm just going to make one, okay? So here again, you're going to want to ensure that the seam is facing downwards, okay? Let's see. I'm going to flip them over, okay? And here we go. This one, sorry, this one here, I did probably half inch from the center and same thing with this one okay. so we're going to sew the same way I've sewn everything else on okay but I still do want to glue some felt pieces to the front of the jack-o-lantern so Go ahead. Okay, so you've got the idea. Go ahead and sew your other leg on, and I will be back for the decorative part. All right, I am back. So I just have this piece of felt that I picked up from, I think this is Michael's, but you can get it. All the dollar stores have them. Just black felt, all right? So to do the eyes, all that I did let me just see. About, about an inch tall. I just went to a corner, like so, and I just cut straight across, right? And then I took that piece to another corner, lined it up perfectly, and then used that as a template and cut it off, okay? So that's how I have the eyes. Now I have one glued on already. Of course, it hasn't set yet. What I'm using is just Aileen's Fabric Fusion. Now it takes, it's gonna take hours for it to set, but we'll try not to be rough with them. Okay, so just go ahead and apply some onto the felt. Now you could also use a hot glue gun. Oh, I should have done that. <laughs> You watch my other tutorials, you know, I'm kind of, I, I, I really enjoy working with the glue gun, but, okay. So just figure out where you'd like your eyes to go. So I'm kind of putting them like that. Okay. Just push down, dry. Dry, dry, dry. Now, I haven't figured out the mouth yet, but what I did is one of the corners, like so, where I cut a triangle, I just figured we'll work with this. Okay, so I've got an edge like this over here. So with my scissors, I'm just going to make a matching slit that way. Okay, so that's what I did here. And then I just cut it across. So from tip to tip, it's about three inches long. And from top, let me move this out of the way. And under an inch, let's say three quarters of an inch wide or tall. Okay. I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do yet, but... When we fold it in half, okay, now in the middle we'll just kind of cut what could look like a tooth, 
just kind of cross. And let's see, we'll do the same thing here to about here. And then we'll just do this one on a curve like that. Not a curve, but a slant. Oh, not too bad. Not too shabby. Could be better, but it could be worse as well. How's that? I think that's awesome. Okay. So, go ahead, put some glue on. Sorry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an artist. I, I'm in paint all the time. Glue. I can't stand being sticky, though. Which is my thing. I don't mind being messy, but I can't stand being sticky. And that's probably why I, my preferred glue method is a hot glue gun. It scalds your skin and then it dries before you have time to get sticky. Okay. It's just, oh well, throw myself into it. There we go. Edge to edge. I'm just, because I, he's kind of on the crack of one of these segments, I'm just going to put, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I can't stand my fingers. Okay, I'm just going to put the center part, just going to kind of push that in, push like that, push like that. Well, what do you think? I think he's pretty handsome, isn't he? Let me see if I can move my camera out a bit. Lift it up. No, we don't want to do that. I'll lift it up. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's not cooperating. There we go. Okay, my friends. Whoopsie. Over here. <laughs> Our time together. Our journey has come to an end again. And uh, I really do enjoy spending this time with you. If you enjoy my tutorials, go ahead, subscribe, hit, give me a big old thumbs up, and share the link. Share it out to the community. I mean, I make absolutely zilch, nothing from these tutorials. I just, uh, as long as I have creative ideas, I have the urge to put it out there into the world. When I dry up and run out of ideas, and when it's not fun anymore, then I will say adieu. But for now, I am passionate about this. All right. And leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. And on social media, I don't have a page, um, Serenity Code of Crafts. I do not have a Facebook page. And I'm telling you right now, I've seen horror stories of other people trying to moderate their pages. I don't anticipate starting a page. Really, I would quickly grow to despise doing this if I had to moderate a page, block people. So I'm just sticking with the creative size, guys. So until next time, be well and take care. Bye.